happy new moon of Leo. The new moon of Leo perfected Sunday, August 4th at 4.14 a.m. Pacific time. So adjust for your time zone accordingly. Hello, my name is Elian Nicole. I'm your astrologer and tarot reader. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the new moon of Leo, what it means and what it summarizes about the entire lunar cycle that will take us from August 4th all the way to September 2nd. And if you follow my astrology, you know that yes, the new moon chart, it tells a story of the whole, you know, 28, 29 days ahead. And um, this new moon chart is very optimistic. It shows a lot of hope. Um, and it's complex at the same time. August is a complex month, but there is a lot of opportunity here. Um, and I use the word opportunity because there are these really beautiful sex styles happening. Um, you know, the new moon is the sun and the moon aligning, and in this case, they're aligning in Leo. And so new moons are seed planting points, and whether we're aware of it or not, we're planting seeds at the new moon, so we might as well do it with some intention. You know, Leo has to do with creative self-expression and children, and playfulness and joy. It also has to do with legacy and so it's a great time to plant seeds around all of those topics. Um, the new moon phase is just like a day or so. And then as the moon waxes and the light of the moon begins to grow, you know, these intentions that we set are, you know, sent out into the universe and begin to manifest things in our lives. And um, this new moon, both the sun and the moon in Leo are forming sextiles to Mars in Gemini and Jupiter in Gemini. So we're dealing with Leo energy and Gemini energy, which complements each other. Sextiles are of the nature of Venus. They bring opportunities. These are opportunities. These aren't things that are just going to land in our lap. We have to be aware of these opportunities, we have to recognize these opportunities, and we have to co-create or interact with these opportunities for them to bloom into something more. But again, there is so much opportunity this month, and because we're dealing with the energy of Leo and the energy of Gemini, it seems that the best way to engage these opportunities and to get the most out of them is to act from the heart and to speak from the heart. That's Leo and Gemini is the speaking, you know, Mars is the taking action. Gemini, Mars and Gemini, direct, clear communication from the heart is how to seize the opportunities. Um, this month, because of these beautiful sextiles between um, Leo and Gemini. This is such a great time for, um, you know, um, performers, for performing, for actors and acting, and um, but also for uh, writers. This is a great month um, and a great time to be writing. Um, and um, just in general, any kind of creative self-expression is really supported under these alignments. Um, and that reminds me that as this new moon perfects, we are just coming off of Venus square Uranus. And so Venus, uh, the goddess of love and beauty, you know, she's just appeared as the evening star. You can go out and see her in the night sky. I highly recommend it. I went to the beach the other day and saw her and she was just beautiful and sparkling and gorgeous and her square with Uranus has to do with surprises, unexpected plot twists around art, and beauty and love, romance, attraction, sex, um, all of these Venusian topics, justice. 
Um, so that energy was leading us into the new moon and, um, and you know, the sextiles that the sun and the moon are making to Mars and Jupiter are also very significant because they are highlighting what is to come in a much bigger, grandiose way as Mars and Jupiter conjoin August 14th. And one thing I will say for this on the collective is that it looks like a huge media explosion happens at this time. And there's going to be so much talking and chatter and texting and phone calls and conversations about what's true and what's not true and what's the right direction to go. And, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of polarity that's happening during this time. It's going to be very easy to be getting sucked into this. Um, and, um, you know, I, I'm not going to give any advice. You do you. I'm just going to say what I see happening here. Um, but, you know, people are going to feel passionate about their beliefs and and wanting to verbalize them or, you know, talk about them on social media or, you know, um, and there's going to be a lot about, yeah, what's true and what's not true. Um, and, you know, it does look like the energy of just there's a proliferation of information coming in. And the good news is that this is a very, it, it can be a very, you know, mind expanding moment and consciousness expanding moment. It can be a time where we're just learning so much. And so it can, if you allow it, be a time to really open your mind. Um, but, you know, everything that we hear or everything that we see in writing, we can't necessarily believe. I mean, one of the other things about this new moon cycle as it's beginning is that Mercury is stationing to go retrograde in Virgo. And Mercury is the dispositor or the ruler of Jupiter and Mars, who, you know, both the sun and the moon are sextiling and who are coming into this conjunction together August 14th. The sun and the moon are sextiling them in the new moon, and then they are coming together for this explosion of information, this explosive conversation, you know, these explosive words that are happening August 14th. And again, we'll see this on the world stage, and if it's in your personal astrology, if you have, you know, planets that are at those degrees, it'll happen in your personal astrology. And there is the possibility of a con game going on, you know. Um, you know, people are really promoting themselves and promoting what, uh, you know, what, yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And um, we're all going to have to take it in and, you know, be discerning with um, this, the knowledge and the information. Um, Mercury stationing to go retrograde um, in this chart means that this month, there's a lot about reviewing the past, reflecting on the past, revisiting the past, um, you know, there's a lot about um, trying to reorganize and to restructure. We may be trying to reinstate. Um, you know, there's reviewing our health, reviewing our daily routine, re reviewing our schedule. There's a lot about purging and editing and decluttering and all of these uh, Mercury and Virgo kinds of things. And then Mercury goes back into Leo and, you know, there, we're revisiting things from childhood. We're, um, you know, people from our childhood or our younger life, teenage life, maybe coming back around. Um, and, um, you know, there's a lot about maybe wanting to clean up some things from the past, tie up some loose ends from the past. Um, 
The asteroid Juno, the wife goddess, is very active in this new moon's chart. She's opposing Neptune and she's trining Uranus. And so there's a sense of one relationship or partnership dissolving as a new unexpected partnership is like landing in our lap. Um, and Juno is the wife asteroid again. So this can in some cases have to do literally with marriages, but it's not just romantic situations. It can be marriages. It can be long-term commitments we're talking about. It can be creative collaborations we're talking about. It can be long-term business partnerships we're talking about. And, um, you know, with Juno, I mean, yeah, it's like it, those long-term one-on-one relationships in our life. Again, one dissolving and another unexpected one landing in our lap that is just filled with flow and ease and maybe seems apparently out of nowhere. It's disrupting our life in the best way possible. Um, and so we have both those energies going on in the new moon. And then, you know, the other thing about the um, Mars and, and Jupiter which are bringing this proliferation of new information and like probably a media explosion on the world stage. Um, they both um, hit a square with Saturn um, down the line. And I believe that that happens. They're squaring off with Saturn. Mars is on the 15th. Um, and then Jupiter is a few days after. And basically this is, um, you know, again, there's a lot of energy of maybe a con artist thing, um, something that's being promoted as truth that may not be true. Um, people arguing over spiritual beliefs, people arguing over what's true, um, authority figures, um, somehow controlling information. Um, it's kind of confusing and there is some confusion that comes mid month. Um, and so that's why this lunar cycle is a mixed bag. There is all this hope and optimism and um, and lots of opportunity. There are all these beautiful alignments for creative self-expression and for writing and for speaking and for communicating. And, you know, in our personal lives, we're seizing the opportunities by direct and clear communication from the heart and acting from the heart and having the courage of our convictions. And all of that is very highly favored. But there is some confusion that will be ensuing in the middle of the month. And this has a lot to do with Mercury going retrograde and Mercury kind of being the trickster with what we think and how we communicate and how we see things. Our perception may be off. Our perception may be distorted. Um, there may be things that we want to believe that are not true. Um, and, you know, it's going to take some discern discernment to sort through all of the different information that's coming from so many different directions. Um, and also, you know, every lunar cycle, we start with the new moon and then in two weeks, there's a full moon and there's a culmination and an illumination at the full moon. And this full moon is an Aquarius. So it has to do with, you know, the people and it has to do with humanity. It also has to do with technology and, um, and it has to do with the future. And um, all of these things are being highlighted. And this full moon is going to be in a T-square with the sun and Uranus, the disruptor. So again, at this lunar, at this full moon, August 19th, there's a disruptive, explosive, potentially, um, you know, defiant, um, there's a shakeup that's coming. There's a big plot twist that's happening 
on the world stage. And, you know, if you have any planets at those degrees, it can be in your personal life as well. But there is a big surprise in the middle of the month, August 19th. And so August 14th to August 19th is very busy. And there's, um, again, just something that everyone is talking about. And it's a very emotional time and a very communicative time, communicative time. And um, yeah, so that's the middle of the month. And, um, you know, Venus is, um, is involved because she's the ruler of Uranus and she is the evening star. And, you know, she is being crowned in this period. Venus is, is being crowned. Um, so I'll speak more on that later in another video. I'm going to wrap this up. I think I've covered a lot of what I wanted to touch on. Um, you know, this is just the broad strokes of what's going on. Um, the North Node, Mars is also sextile the north node in this cycle and so there is an opportunity to align with our there's an opportunity to align with our higher purpose and our direction in life and really have a clear view of where we want to move in the future um and I encourage you to contact me for a reading. That's why I do these videos because um, I like to give an offering, um, but, and, and I think everyone should have access to free astrological knowledge if they want, but astrology works the best when you're working one-on-one -on -one with an astrologer. I love doing readings. I would love to read for you. I read on Zoom so I can read for people anywhere in the country anywhere in the world. It would be my great joy and pleasure and honor to read for you. Uh, follow me at astrology.tarot.elianicole. Go to the profile bio, hit the contact button underneath and email me to get on the calendar. If you're watching this on YouTube, my email is down on the notes to get on the calendar and schedule a reading with me. But yeah, I think that um, this is a great time for a reading. You know, mid-August until the end of this year, is really impactful, significant astrology. The world is um, worlding and life is lifing. And it's always good to know what the cosmic weather and currents are so that we can navigate and co-create and, um, you know, surf these cosmic waves of life um, in the best way possible. So... Uh, thank you for joining me and um, enjoy this uh, new moon of Leo cycle that's taking us from August 4th to September 2nd. Talk to you soon.